Be honest with yourself. Before the season started, if you said that Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks would make it to the conference finals, you'd be laughed out of the room. Even though the Hawks stacked their roster this offseason with some solid veteran pieces, there were many questions surrounding the team. The biggest question was whether or not Young could lead his team to the postseason. Through Young's first two seasons in the NBA, the Hawks were 49-100, and 100, and Trey was putting up good but empty stats on losing teams. Although he was considered one of the best young talents in the league, many people thought he didn't have what it takes to lead a team to the next level. Well, as we know now, that most certainly isn't the case. Young and the Hawks have surprised everyone this season by not only making the playoffs, but winning two series as the underdog. And after a masterful Game 1 performance in which Trey scored 48 points, they're three wins away from making the finals for the first time since the franchise moved to Atlanta in 1968. So how do we get to this point? And why did so many people, including myself, think so lowly of Trey's franchise playing potential? To fully understand how the Hawks built a contending team around their burgeoning superstar, we have to flash back to the 2018 draft and see how they made shrewd moves along the way to get to where they're at in 2021. Real quick, before we start, make sure to subscribe to my channel. We're up to over 150 subscribers, which is truly a blessing. We release new videos every week, so comment below if you have any ideas for what I should cover next. And while you're here, feel free to check out my video on Luka Doncic, who was the other big part of the Trey Young Draft Night Saga. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to give the video a like, and without further ado, let's get started. The dawn of the Hawks resurgence goes back to draft day in 2018. Although Atlanta selected Doncic with a third pick, they ended up trading him to the Dallas Mavericks for Trey Young and a future first rounder. At the time, many people thought the Hawks made the wrong decision to pass up on Luka, since he was considered to be a generational talent. But Atlanta wanted the type of player that would fit the style of the city more, and Young was definitely more of an Atlanta type player than Doncic was. Not only that, but the 2019 first rounder from the Mavs ended up being Cam Reddish, who's been a solid piece for the team. And it's not like the Hawks got a significantly worse player in Young. In 2018, Trey led the NCAA in scoring and assists and established himself as one of the best true point guard prospects in some time. Overall, the move to trade for Trey was not as much of a misstep as some initially thought. So going into 2018, the Hawks had a foundational piece in Young and significant draft capital heading forward. Although they ended the season 29-53, and Trey proved that he could keep up with the NBA game. He ended up leading the team in minutes played, scoring, and assisting, with 19 points per game and 8 assists per game. He also showcased his tremendous offensive talent. In a pick and roll situation, Young would either use a screen and pass it up to the big man for a lob, or take a floater near the rim. Either way, more often than not, the Hawks were coming away with points. Trey also demonstrated his ability to stretch the floor and knock down the long ball with ease. He was starting to take shots in Curry and Lillard range as a rookie and made them at a respectable clip. These signs of strength in his offensive arsenal were very encouraging to say the least. The other major development for the Hawks was the emergence of John Collins, who in his second year shot his averages up to 19.5 points per game and 10 rebounds per game. Collins was the ideal pick and roll partner for a rookie young, and the two developed a solid rapport. With Collins and Young, the Hawks now had two studs to build their future around. In the same 2019 draft that they got Reddish, Atlanta also found itself with the 4th overall pick due to a trade with the Los Angeles Lakers. They selected DeAndre Hunter, who's proven to be another key rotational player for the team. Hunter and Reddish are both versatile young wings who are solidifying a defensive core that the Hawks are building around Trey Young. In the 2019-2020 season, Trey picked up right where he left off. He expanded his offense to include a variety of step back and crossover moves and pushed his range further and further towards half court. Although Young was beginning to blossom, Atlanta was faltering. So after a disappointing first season and a half under Trey, the Hawks made an underrated trade that would be pivotal to their future success. The Houston Rockets dealt center Clint Capella to Atlanta just before the trade deadline. Even though Houston was a playoff contender, they wanted to go super small ball and in turn got rid of their best true center. The Hawks were more than happy to take on Clint and use him as a primary lob threat and defensive anchor. Over his career, Capella had established himself as one of the best rim runners in the league, as well as an astute shot blocker and rebounder. In five years as a starter for Houston, Clint averaged a 13-10 double-double along with 1.5 blocks. 
it was a very solid pickup for a team that desperately lacked an interior presence. So in the shortened season, Atlanta found itself 20-47, and 47, but with an improved roster from a season ago. Collins took another step forward, and Kevin Red Velvet Herder rose up to become a key bench scorer. Both players, along with Capella, would be instrumental in the ascension of Atlanta down the line. And for Young, this season he exploded onto the national scene, making the All-Star team for the first time as a starting point guard despite the team's lackluster record. He ended the 2020 season with averages of 30 points, 9 assists on 44% field goal shooting and 86% free throw shooting. The pick and roll play with either Collins or Capella was proving to be unstoppable, and Trey was separating himself from other point guards in terms of his ability to orchestrate the offense a la Steve Nash. As good as Ice Trey's numbers were, there were beginning to be concerns about whether or not his playing well could translate to the Hawks winning games. And that concern was warranted due to the Hawks' subpar record in his first two years. People were starting to think that perhaps Young's playing and leadership styles weren't beneficial to Atlanta's future prospects. The combination of his perceived empty stats and his somewhat annoying playing style rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah, he was a super talented scorer and passer, but how he got his points was, at times, let's say very Harden-like. Young modeled his game around foul hunting, lunging into defenders forwards, sideways, backwards, any way he could get to the line he would do it. Of course he wasn't the only player in the league to do this, but he was doing it on teams that didn't have a lot of success, which didn't help his cause. Also, his encore antics such as nutmegging other players, shimming after shots, and his cold as ice celebration were fun and full of swagger, but they come off as self-indulgent when being done on a losing team. I for one don't mind flashy plays from flashy players, but I do get why people had an issue with it at the time. It was part of the narrative that he plays with gusto, but it wasn't translating to winning basketball. Furthermore, during his first two seasons, Trey was a big defensive liability. He was constantly being hidden on defense, but when he was forced to defend opposing wing players, he was a below average defender who couldn't hold his man in front of him. As a team, the Hawks had an atrocious 118 defensive rating in 2020 with Young on the floor, good for a bottom 10 defense. It was clear that he had a few deficiencies that Atlanta needed to cover up if they ever wanted to be a winning team. But Trey wasn't the only one feeling the pressure in the organization. The Hawks fired their GM and president after a letdown in 2019, and found their replacement in Travis Schlenk. In the offseason prior to this season, Schlenk went to work retooling the roster. Within a two-month span, he brought over seasoned players like Danilo Gallinari, Bogdan Bogdanovic, and Rajan Rondo to bolster the team, and selected defensive-minded shot blocker Onyeka Okongwu with a sixth overall pick. The Hawks made a lot of buzz in the offseason as a team that was ready to turn the corner from their losing ways. So going into the 2020 season, there were a lot of expectations riding on the shoulders of Young and the Hawks. Atlanta had a projected starting lineup of Young, Bogdanovich, Reddish, Collins, and Capella, with Rondo, Gallinari, Hunter, Herder coming off the bench. They had a legitimately deep team that had all the makings of a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. However, those same lingering questions still remained. Could Young lead his most talented supporting cast to the playoffs? Or would it be more of the same for Trey and company? Things started off looking more the same, as the Hawks again began the season poorly. By the All-Star break, Atlanta was 16-20, and, and it looked like they were on pace for another losing season with Trey. But Schlenk made two monumental changes for the team in March to change the direction of the season. His first decision was to fire head coach Lloyd Pierce and replace him with veteran coach Nate McMillan. This move drew the ire of the NBA coaching community, as Pierce was viewed as a scapegoat for a losing team. They thought that he didn't have a fair chance to work with the best version of the roster, as there were injuries to several key players during the season. Whatever the feelings were around the league, Lloyd was replaced by a man who had already proven himself as a qualified head coach in the league and was a more than capable villain. The second big move by Schlenk was to trade Rondo to the Los Angeles Clippers for Lou Williams and two future second round picks. Rondo had fallen out of the rotation, as Young was getting the bevy of minutes at point guard. They essentially replace a player who was not playing much at all with a three-time Six Man of the Year award winner. Sweet Lou was a perfect player to put alongside Trey when he came off the bench. He could provide quality scoring for the team in non-Trey Young minutes, which was always a problem for the team. These two moves, along with the return of Bogdanovich, led to the Hawks going on a tear to end the season. Atlanta finished a year on a 25-11 run, including an eight-game win streak. 
They went from a bottom tier playing team to the fifth seed in the East, mainly on the backs of Trey, Bogdan, and Clint. It was the first time in Young's NBA career that the team was playing winning basketball with him leading the charge. Despite all of their regular season success, the playoffs were going to be a different animal to contend with. The Hawks had a bunch of players who were playing meaningful games for the first time in their careers, most notably Young, Collins, and Bogdanovich. Furthermore, they were the fifth seed, so they wouldn't have home court advantage in any series in the playoffs. But in the first round, the Hawks answered the call by defeating the four seed favorite New York Knicks. This included a game winning floater for Young in game one in a raucous MSG. He withstood 48 minutes of intense heckling from the fans and silenced the crowd. Trey quickly made himself public enemy number one in New York and filled the Reggie Miller void in the hearts of Knicks fans like myself. Atlanta went on to win the series in five and turned the doubters and non-believers into fools. Their underdog mentality continued heading into their second round series against the top seeded Philadelphia 76ers. Once again, very few people gave the Hawks a shot at winning the series. They were going against the best defense in the East and a top three MVP candidate in Joel Embiid. Still, it didn't matter as Atlanta won in seven, including three road wins in Philly. A second round win against a finals contender officially vaulted Trey and the Hawks from a surprising story to a possible finals team themselves. It was a truly unbelievable turnaround for the franchise and such a redeeming story arc for Young and how he's been perceived around the league. So after an incredible run to the conference finals, I think it's time we give Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks the apology they're owed. Many experts were wrong to label Young as a good stats bad team guy. I was one of those people who thought the trade was just too small and too much of a defensive liability to lead his team to this point in the postseason. Obviously, this season he shattered that stereotype and shown just how good he can be. I also thought that passing up on Luka would come back to haunt the franchise for the next decade. The Hawks were doubted from the start for selecting to build around Trey, but even though Young might be a slightly inferior player overall when compared to Doncic, there is no doubt that it could be just as good on any given night. The Hawks have given Young a phenomenal supporting cast to work with, which is crucial for a point guard like Trey. Atlanta has also found a way to make themselves a solid defensive team in spite of Young's liabilities on that end, much like the Warriors did with Curry. They also got the perfect big man to complement Trey's pick and roll game, surrounded one of the best passers in the NBA with plenty of knockdown shooters, and got the perfect defensive minded head coach to lead the way. All in all, I think Schlenk has performed a masterclass in roster construction, and the Hawks have pressed all the right buttons during this run to the Eastern Conference Finals. That being said, it wasn't like some of the criticisms people had were invalid in the first two seasons prior to this one. Trey was putting up empty stats on bad teams, and the Hawks weren't doing enough at the time to justify taking Young over Doncic. But the beautiful part about sports is that narratives can always change. In the end, both parties were proved right, and they deserve all the praise they can get. Trey proved he can lead a winning team in his first time in the playoffs, and the Hawks proved that they made the right choice in building around Young and his specific skill set. The Hawks are a gritty team that don't care about what the naysayers have to say. If they can beat the Milwaukee Bucks, it would be one of the most surprising finals runs by a team in NBA history. But at this point, I'm done doubting Trey Young. I've done a total 180 on him, from doubting his potential and hating his guts for knocking out my Knicks, to loving every second of his postseason run since. I seriously think the Hawks can win the finals, and I'd have to eat a lot of crow if they did. But for Trey in Atlanta, it would just be the cherry on top of the hater Sunday that they've eaten up all season long. And in all honesty, I'll be cheering for Trey and all of his shimmies along the way.